I can death, death probably made it if they want this timber off lane. Uh, <sighs> that's it. And we talked about needing more against the CK. Oh, it's and mid timber. Oh, oh my god. Timber brings it. Like, that's a hero that can make CK's life very miserable. I love it. And also, like, Nine talked about this mid timber saw. It is, like, probably one of the only mid heroes um, that can not only pressure the mid hero alone, but also pressure the tower alone. Like, Honestly, he does not really need these go. big uh, rotations if they want to focus on uh, the side lanes. Yeah, yeah. The pro problem, you don't have this opportunity of switching up the lanes and putting Viper against him. I don't think so, at least. Maybe hmm. there's a world in which you can CEO even go mid. Jackie off lane with the Tusk with the Chen. Tiny safe lane Viper mid, but uh, I think the Viper's point here is to pressure the alchemist as well, right? With, with the yeah. task, so mm -hmm. you don't really have that maneuverability. Mm -hmm. How do you feel those this Ten lanes? Seconds, how they're going to go, and how it's going to transition into the later game? Where are you putting your, your favorites? Five seconds Ooh, remaining. I, I, I still think this Viper lane is strong, but I, I'm slightly <laughs> leaning towards Liquid. I think the way they set this draft up and got this last pick Timber plus the Edge being enough to secure Matu a good lane. And more importantly, it's Alki's going to catch up in the jungle. I'll give Liquid like 60-40 favorites on the draft. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I think like the timing on Liquid is too scary for Boom. I don't know how they're meant to deal with it. They need to crush their lanes so hard and then just like dominate the map space. I'll be the odd one out. I'll go with Boom game. <laughs> I feel that if their lanes do go well, they could crush the game before Alchemist comes online. Yeah, they could just absolutely run away with it. But for now, we're going to run over to our casters. It is Lyrical and Trent. Thank you so much, Nat, and the wonderful panel. Trent, we got one of the most hyped games of all time. Winner goes to TI. One of these teams, they absolutely have to win if they want to get in for the direct point. How are you feeling? Uh, this you is what you want go? with the DPC. Yes, yes. This is what we come to. Come to our lands, right? Mm -hmm. Get the big points, make it all the way. So this is the chance for Liquid. They need to be victorious here. To make it, boom, it'll be out of their hands at that point. Exactly. And uh, just win it. Just secure it right now. This is right. your chance. So a humongous series for both teams. And it's not just these teams either. It's all of those respective regions teams. I saw yeah. on there, a lot of yeah. Southeast Asian teams, they don't want to play against Boom in those qualifiers. They want to get there uh, on their own merits and, you know, have a couple more spots. Right now, it's Fnatic and Boom, the only ones. If they're both out, then there's no TI teams that are coming from C through the direct qualification of points. But let's get into this. Game number one as Liquid head out across the map, picking this last pick, Timbersaw, and a little bit of a switch up, but a pretty devastating one against all these strength melee cores. Yeah, Boom had their options. Obviously, uh, you can only go so far in the drafting phase when you don't have that final pick. And they started out with the Tiny, and in the end, they did decide to give that to Yopaj. And uh, essentially what that says is that they really believed that the Tim's hero was going to be super important here, and they weren't very concerned about getting counterpicked in the mid lane on this Tiny. It was kind of apparent at that point that that was very likely to be the mid hero. And so they, they just put a lot of value into Tim's Tusk here. And of course, Tusk Chen has been an extremely powerful combination uh, over the past couple of years. And that is something that can help you snowball your way to a victory before someone like this Alchemist can come online. If they can keep that momentum going, seconds. like Lizard said, up. win those lanes, and that's the recipe for Boom's success. And on the other yeah. side, Liquid trying to hold out, get the Alchemist big and strong. And Boom, after standing up on that high ground, none of Liquid are going to rotate in. They are going to head on over and pick up the bounty runes instead. There might still be a bit of a battle here. We'll see. Just outside of vision. Actually, they're going to run down bottom instead. So this could end up being three. The Although, also Zai's heading over. Skem, going to see if he can outclick there. Liquid managed to find two. Boom, on the other side, uh, only getting the one, and they'll pick up two as well. Yeah, and Zai, of course, uh, unfortunately, unaware that he, he could have just gone up there and grabbed that one himself there too, but Skem will come around, happily see that it's still there. We go for two for two for starts. So there was some questions about if there are going to be any lane swap ups going on, but it looks like they're just going to try and play this one straight on boom, uh, and they're going to have to deal with the timber saw in the lane. Um, could be a bit tough for Yopaj though. Uh -uh. So we've been seeing what's been happening with these timber saws. It's just in a side lane. You get a solo situation where they're able to uh, pull the lanes apart, farm the lane, pull the wave into a, uh, a jungle camp, and then farm through that as well. And they get off this accelerated start, which, re which really increases their pressure across the entire map. And so that's something that Mickey's also going to be able to do here from the mid lane. He can get some space open. Uh, and then obviously the big thing is this whirling death taking away all that HP from Yopaj and also uh, continuing to 
mitigate his last hitting potential, but starting with a lot of base damage on that tiny. Uh, other lanes that we should watch for up on the top side, actually, they managed to find a quick little courier snipe. So Boxy moves on in, takes that down, and uh, Skim and Jackie gonna have to make do with a little bit less regen there. And Zai, a couple punches, forced out of the lane, Boxy goes on in to secure the range. Yeah, that was nice. No, no panic fissure there, just to, like preventing damage on the Zai instead oh. securing the range creep, but now he's getting some damage on the Skim. And likewise, down bottom, Zania takes some punches, Tim's gonna be fine through it. Skem also backs away, but FBZ, boss man indeed. A couple more punches, and Matumba man draws first blood on the Alchemist. Well, you heard the panel saying, you know, there have been situations where, of course, this Viper able to pressure early, but catches him at just level one. So not enough options to slow down Matu. They don't get the combination as well from the Tusk, of course, as you don't have the tag team yet, so you're not able to punch back and really threaten with this damage there. Doesn't mean the lane's over by any means, but certainly a great start there for Liquid. And yeah, one of the benefits of spamming out that wave and getting that level two, uh, really, really nice. As Yopaj heads on over, we'll pick up a... Uh, Quick little water rune, refill, and head on back to lane. Mickey does not have a bottle, just going in for the bracer and trying to pick up a soul ring next. But you can see that uh, mainly just that bottom lane that's a little bit of a rough one, losing the Viper. Yeah, meanwhile, you just got like the sports up top just pulling waves apart while you tornado a alley down bottom. Yeah, gotta be careful. Boxy very happy with the situation though. Yeah, gets the pull through and actually Zai Gonna pull the wave behind the tower to connect up with the rest of it. They will lose that range creep. Uh, Skem comes in, so this is all behind the tower. This is great right now. I mean, Bossy's got more last than Zai at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's the classic. Did I? That's what we've seen. And yeah, indeed, the, they're, they're gonna keep pulling that around. Need to find a way to control that wave on Boom. It's just so hard when you can get those like fast-moving heroes messing with the equilibrium. Again, Mickey in the mid lane, 12 and a 5 versus the 15 and 7. So it hasn't really been a super hard uh, counter pick yet. Yopaj still doing very well in the mid lane. Yeah, we'll have to watch though as, uh, you know, level 2 Whirling Jabs is going to keep pushing, harassing with that. And then when the 4 minute runes come up, you imagine that's when there could be a situation of rotations. So, uh, see if any supports decide to come mid for that. Uh, Yopaj still has a bound rune inside his jungle. I don't know if Box is going to make a play over for that anytime soon, because obviously his timber hasn't had uh, the urgency to get there due to the, the no bottle build. Right. And again, they're pressuring up top to try and grab another wave, it looks like. Um, well, at least they're able to zone him back. Skem was doing a good job sending those creeps over that direction. Jackie gets away finally underneath his tower here. But again, a very passive uh, start to this one. Both teams just trying to sort of out uh, maneuver the other ones in terms of getting the, the more macro around the map as Boxy runs into Skem, picks up that bounty run, and Tim's also interrupted. <laughs> Yo, Patch forced to throw out the avalanche here just to get to the water rune first as well inside the river too, but... Looks like Skem should be all right on the runaway here. And uh, in, in the bottom lane, what's been happening is they haven't been able to apply this pressure that you want from a Tusk and a Viper because Insania had the pole opened up uh, from the small camp. And so he's been managing that, he's been sending the creeps in, and you're kind of getting everything that you want in this lane as an inch, right? Typically, we've run into these situations where you're not getting any creeps, it's always being blocked out. But Insania just having a bit of freedom here. Part of that coming from the ability to just like push out the wave because the, uh, the Alchemist, but... Also, just uh, that initial creep con uh, control of the camps is so important for this hero. And they're the ones who are actually bullying and pressuring and just like constant unstable concoctions being tossed in from Matu, making it uh, a bit wary for them to, to dive in here from Boom, despite yeah. having such an aggressive duo. I mean, you can tell it's one of those matches where nice. neither side wants to like give up anything easy. They're both playing very conservatively and zero deaths uh, to make sure that they are, you know, keeping it even in this pivotal matchup for them. Jackie, very low. Uh, needs to get some lifesteal off some of those creeps or something. I feel like being 0, zero, zero at five and a half minutes is probably not good for a ninth pick cuss. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair point. It, it puts a lot of pressure on your mid game, you know? Zeopage. I mean, this is going to be an interesting point to see what happens when Mikke hits six. He just gets it now, and it's hard to imagine him staying in this lane with Chakram available. Gotcha. Even though he doesn't have the timber chain, it's still really dangerous. And you can see Tiny already heading back to base. Yeah, Tim's, oh, he tries to go with the chase down the tag team. They went so long, and then Insania just captures the creep of the jungle. Yeah, that'll happen. Oh, there's the ensnare coming in. Got level Need six body blocks on here. 
but what? they won't go for it. Interesting. I really thought with the Fisher they would just, uh, is it just too much wasted time, I guess, basically? Like, I feel like, uh, I guess there's always a chance he just gets a snowball up, right? Like, FPZ gives him vision of the camp, he snowballs to the neutrals or something, and so I can just get that chase. Dyer's no Eat that Better to press for the tiny. Right. Rolling death, they're actually glyphing for the catapult. Find him here. Opage doesn't have a target to toss to. Not going to connect with that Chakram, but still, catapult being alive means there's some good damage onto this mid tier one. And they try and kill it off. Almost dead. Move on in, and the Opage takes out the catapult. So Liquid is slowly winning these like laning stage engagements. They're getting more out of the lanes, it looks like, according to those last hits denies. Um, but you can see that it's not a huge differential. Still less than a thousand gold separated him. Mean, it's an alchemist at the end of the day. I think the problem to me is that uh, this constant pressure on Yopaj just means that there's going to be more support attention coming mid, particularly from Tim's, and then even just like uh, Scam 2, you can see he's kind of floating around this area. So this is where the side lanes are going to suffer, and even if they're not suffering, they're definitely not uh, progressing in an offensive manner. So someone like Matsu, like, he, he's just been kind of free from it. Yeah. He's having an excellent stack considering he's in a lane versus a Tusk and a Viper. I feel like Insania did a very good job of actually showing off the strength of the Enchantress when everything goes right. Like, you can see why he has put so much effort into blocking off these creeps and everything, because he, he's just given so much space for Matu here. Right. Al could gain everything that he wants. And Zai playing much more for the laning stage as Insania runs into Tim's, and this might finally be a bit too far for him. The tag team, a couple punches, but Matumba Man moves in. A snowball to dodge the stun, and still FBZ taking a lot of damage with all that minus Yo, armor and having the extra creep to good shards block up. Oh, that was a pretty bait. Stun is there, it's not enough to kill the Viper. Well played by Boom. Yeah, Yopash needing that desperately, right? Because he doesn't really have that many safe places to go right now. He's not the fastest neutral farmer at this point, and he's got maxed Dyer's out Avalanche, so he really needs to find a situation where he can find a hero because of this Timbersaw's threat in the mid lane. Ideal situation there. It's absolutely huge. That puts him second on net worth. Huge bonus for Yopash. Very, very big. Mickey, of course, wants to make a, a lot happen at this point in the game. With three points up in reactive armor has the arcane boots about to come out now trying to pressure the tower a lot of the damage comes via the creeps another fissure block off we've seen this before Yopaj tries to get away the hurricane avalanche thrown out viper strike now onto mickey fdz trying to survive through this and in fact they're going to be able to mickey goes down boom they bring numbers mid and punish that heavy pressure into the mid lane Okay, not supposed to be going down at this point. I mean, obviously, you are forcing the rotation, so that's still good here for side. A bit of pressure under the tower. It does pop the exorcism as the stun comes out from Jackie. But a nice fissure block off, and Jackie in trouble. I don't think there's any way out of this one. As Zai takes the kill and is going to move to try and secure the tower, there is a glyph available. And in fact, with Yopaj in the area, we'll find Boxy, Avatons, couple more punches, they get the kill, glyph the tower. Boom, still protecting objectives. I feel like there's such small moments for Yopaj that he's been needing Radiant's to catch this game because of his build, killed. right? He's so reliant on getting these heroes that it's actually kind of ridiculous. He's finding two perfect moments there. Heads up play by Zai just to back out with Tim's nearby and having a lot of lockdown. They even got the Ogre Bruiser, I think. Uh, they are not wanting to tempt fate. It sends Jackie to the mid lane now. Gonna try and hold this down. It does provide a bit of a threat in terms of Radiant rotation, the stun, and potential boost for Tim's. Tim's in behind the tier one. Now, the great ward to spot these TPs and he even catches Boxy a little bit here for some harass, but not gonna find anything too serious as now. Four heroes mid, they're gonna find the 10 minute rune. Unfortunately, just a regen though. Right. Not, not what you're hoping for. You're kind of hoping to make a smoke play, I'd imagine, with Yopaj right there. Well, you talked about the, the need that they had to get active as uh, so just leaving some trash behind it. I'll pick up the shovel. <laughs> um, the, the sort of pressure that was on this Tusk to make a lot of mid-game movements, uh, you know, keep himself active, get kills. So far, he's been able to do that, kind of mirroring a couple of those movements that we've seen from the Earthshaker. But likewise, I'm looking at this this liquid draft. You've got Timber Saw, you've got Enchantress, you've got Death Prophet, and at 10 minutes, all the Tier 1 tower is relatively healthy. It's a little bit uh, scary. I mean, I guess they've got the Alk in their back pocket, but... Yeah, you and mine have a little bit more pressure in it. It seems like it Boom just able to put these uh, sort of like stalwart lane holders in place, right? They're just throwing down someone like this uh, CK. In the lane whenever necessary. Sania. 
Have it. Toss. Couple more punches. Very survivable, but in the end, they'll bring down Bambi and boom, look to take that bottom tier one. Well, FBZ makes the movement to mid. Sets Radiant's up to defend. Is under attack. So Liquid, while they have a lot of sustain, they have not been able to latch onto those objectives yet. Waiting for Matumba Man's Radiance, which is just about completed on the Relic. Yeah, the, we kind of have like, has like five wall heroes, I guess, in this game, or six even, the sense of just like holding the tower and, and tower sort of requiring a lot of effort if you want to actually overtake in these situations. Uh, pretty much like all the Tricor on Boom can provide that role, but they just kind of like sit there, camp a little bit, and once the numbers are too big, they, they manage to find their way out. Of course, Jackie just hitting a stack. Not the best hero for this, obviously. It takes a bit of time. Dyer's oh, yeah. Is under attack. Tumbleman pulling the creep wave Radiant's over to his camp. And attack. mid lane, they're pressuring. Well, also Radiant's in the jungle, Liquid is kind of chasing this uh, CK out of there. He's so, the back. like, he does not care. You know, he's no. like, yeah, this isn't that great for me, but my whole team is rotating mid. They're grabbing that tower. This is Chen coming online right now, farming in towards that mech. And again, if, if you do wait and get the Radiance timing, Liquid feel like they're going to be very strong at that point, but how much damage is going to be done uh, around that moment? As well as who is Yopaj going to catch the start of these fights, right? Like, has that Blink Dagger. Every fight wants to open with an Ava toss into a, a follow-up there as well from Tim, so you can kill pretty much anyone at the start. If you're in sync there, Roxy spots Yopaj. Can't stop it though. Tim's available. The punch. The shards. Nothing done. Roxy is committing. Goes in. Exorcism. Silence. Wants to make a big move. Is it going to be a little bit of a dangerous one? Get some separation. Zai gets caught by the stop, but Yopaj already did it. FPT turns with the viper strike. Zai is done. Scam backs away from Mickey, but the Timber Saw will clean up. Is this? Creeps need to back out at this point, as it's a trade of two for two. A heavy commit there from Zai, but not able to get the uh, the shard block. I feel like they wanted to get the wall in, but weren't able to do it. So Zai, although he was isolated and does end up dying for it, still to get the kill on Yopaj is really going to help slow down this pacing from Boom. But much like the Radiance being built up in this back of Ramatu, there is a similar situation here from Jackie, who's just trying to farm into that secondary item of the Echo Saber and provide a little bit more threat in these team fights when he finally decides to join up. Well, and the, the big differential is, of course, like supports on Boom, getting a lot of farm, about a thousand gold ahead of the Ench and the Earthshaker, but it's also that Alchemist, which now completed the Radiance pretty much uh, top of the net worth and looking to get into the BKB next, but he's still very vulnerable with no BKB. If they can connect, the top of man, does he scout out the there? No, they have the top back. Do they have enough damage, though? They definitely will. And he's broken. They get the finish. Skip back. Goes up with the mech for the save. Tim's trying to walk away. They have the snowball. FBZ still trying to chase on his own. Trying to push the something off the mark. And another round of the avalanche. The taunt's back. They pull him in for the reality rift. You lose the tusk, but you take Alk and Death Prophet. Yeah, Zai getting the Yules delivered mid-engagement there, but not, not even getting a chance to use it. He gets blown up so quickly there. And that's what we're talking about. Like, you, you think about this uh, Tiny maybe not able to blow up some of these tankier heroes, but that's one thing that Tusk can provide for you. So even if they felt like maybe Yopaj would have a bit of a rougher time mid and wouldn't get that like super fast experience acceleration where you get the more damage by leveling up all your skills, getting the ulti, by having that extra bit of oomph on the Tusk, they can still get a big target like Matu. And I mean, it, it has been a really fabulous showing so far from Boom. Uh, they, they've recognized when Liquid is strong, dodged away from those fights, keeping that mid tower alive for so long. And I mean, Yopaj, right before he stepped into the acid spray, gets the blink off, finds Patumbo Man. Yeah, and I mean, you need that toss back, right? Like, you, you needed that bonus damage there from Tim's. There can't be any delay for that regen to kick in there. And Skem's mech really helping to uh, solidify Liquid committing a bit too hard for this fight. Very, very clutch stuff. Another top pick. What a hero. Yeah. You know, those low cool Apparently downs. Tiny's good. <laughs> Tiny is very good. Oh, the Tumba Man, not too concerned. Gets a little dance on. Still feeling like they're in a, a decent position. And I mm -hmm. can't argue with that. And he's just doing Alf Taunt. And yeah, you can see there's a, a little wall of wards here. Uh, that one behind the tier one still surviving all the way through there. We got another one in the jungle right there too. So, Yo Paj, he's hunting. Dyer's middle but tower Liquid, is under attack. they're not presenting themselves as a target yet. Has fallen. As everybody Radiant on the bottom side of the map, they've fly. given up that Roche area to boom. Although, I don't think that they want to go in and take Radiant's it anytime soon. Oh, look at that ward. They just popped attack. on that smoke over the Dyer's Observer Ooh. Ward, too. So. 
looks like the, it was just running low. Uh, I'm curious if Boxy opts for the shard or if he wants to try and hang all the way for the blink dagger. Right. It's a bit of a tough call this game because I do think the shard's really valuable when you're playing with the uh, the Death Prophet as well as the Timber and the Alp, right? These should be long delayed fights. There's a lot of sustain and regen on his team, and so you do get the one shot jump with the Echo Slam blink, sure, but the shard, like the multiple spells, the constant stuns, I, I actually feel like it's worth it if you're not able to farm to that blink dagger, and I do think he's going to struggle to get there this game. This would be the moment when obviously a blink would be great, but uh, it is nowhere near it. And like you said, uh, could be a bit of a problem, particularly if Bloom can take this Aegis and start translating that into more objectives around the map, shutting down the areas where Liquid can farm. They do manage to take that bottom tier at one tower on Liquid. So opening up the map a little bit, all the tier ones now at dead in this game. But this, I mean, Bot's just gonna pray for a Philly. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like, like it's, it's so. It's this so next hard. round of neutrals comes in. I don't know where he's gonna get a wave to farm this Blink Dagger. He's just gonna need a good engagement, some sort of a fight where he can hang in there, get these fishers, and hope that he doesn't get caught farming under towers like this, because it's certainly a precarious position for him, with a tiny hunting across the map. But instead, they're smoking. They're trying to find a bigger target. Yeah, that would have been a good kill on Boxy, but instead, this oh. could be a bigger one. Fine side for the tossback, but a little bit away. Chain's doesn't not matter. Me. He's dead. He has mules. Yeah, that's he can't rough. use it. That's, it's not available. Not ready. Tough, tough. All right, well, space. He's halfway. You know, he's, he has about 600 gold to go. He's getting there. Yep. He got that wave up top. Mickey. In the meantime, taking the other wave. Radiance bottom tower is under yeah, attack. We'll see. For now, boom. They're free to do whatever they want on the map. Uh, wherever they want to go, it feels like Liquid can't fight them. Yeah, and slowly it becomes this vacuum situation where all the gold gets kind of sucked up by Matu. Radiance and structures. We'll see if you can get him into that next item past this BKB. Structures are but fortified. I could see a, a good start to the fight if Radiance they manage to get the blink dagger done for Boxy. He gets a decent initiation. Matu's in there with the big burn damage BKB, and uh, there will be some issues on control, of course. As they don't have that much deal to BKB at this point. You know, Tim's isn't really that scary. He can just sort of uh, stun you down a bit. But uh, Yopaj is still heavily relying on the magic burst. There's a lot of heroes over there. I don't know if they would have been able to take down Yopaj anyways, to be honest. 200 gold away for Boxy. It's an outpost now for Boom. They Go control 18 minutes into a game. Illusion. And they have vision all over this area. They see everything that Matumbo Man's doing. Underneath those wards. And Liquid. I mean, Look at this TP up top, too. That is interesting. For you. Okay. Everyone's coming. Uh oh, look at Insania. Yeah, Insania is in trouble there. Although, well, from the high ground. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. Okay, I like it. The hurricane. I was like, I was like he doesn't have a tumbler. So I was like, oh, there it is. Uh, the old birds helping out. Kind of love those birds. They're awesome. And Blink's done. Okay, BKB for the Alk completed. You've got Timber Sauce, Sanjin Kaya. I mean, this is about as good a time as I, I see to make a fight happen, but I guess the other problem is the Aegis, so they kind of still have to wait it out a bit. It's just terrifying to think of how do you manage to survive into getting the benefits of your regeneration, right? Yeah. It, it's just a matter of burst. You have three cores that rely on that ability of reactive armor or just the, the siphon plus the exorcism or just chemical rage. Like they all have a, a very similar concept here. At the very least, uh, we don't have any sort of like spear vessel or something. That's true. So that, that's always a bonus. And the other thing that you could look at is the, the BKBs for uh, Boom, right? Just completing that now on the, the CK. I'll send it down on the Viper and Mickey. He just walks into him. Fissure is there, but he's got the BKB if they need it. Tim's ready with the snowball save. MPC jumped up on MPC. Just gets blown up and dead. Okay. Now turn, look for Yopaj, Mickey right on him. And Yopaj also likely to fall. They just walked in and died. Yeah, Tim was like 20 gold away from a fight. Oh, man. So not having that save option, and, and they just kind of slow rolled them a bit, right? They, they kind of whittle them down. We know how Boom want to play these fights. They want that big burst of damage at the very beginning. And so when you catch the Viper first, and they, they're able to just kind of slowly crawl their way into that fight, having some vision up on the high ground there too. Yeah, that was perfect. I mean, again, you had the BKB on the Viper, just didn't want to pop it. And yep. Maybe a bit of greed there, but it ends up paying off for Liquid. Suddenly, they find their feet in this match. Still, you can see Dota Plus win probability heavily favoring Boom, but 
that could have been one of those inflection points. We'll see if it ends up mattering as the game goes on here. Zai trying to get towards the BKB. Yeah, there's certainly a chance we look back at this and say, oh, they, they lost their map control, you know, and then they had a really hard time getting it back, maybe lose more heroes in the situation because finally Liquid are just out there. You know, yeah. they're back. Uh, Boom, it just kind of sheltered them back in, forced them to uh, the worst parts of the map for farming, but they're able to get back out here now. But uh, yeah, I'd say, you know, Mage Slayer, full timing DKB, still there for Jackie, so even when he does lose this Aegis, it's not like he's going to be frail by any means. No. No, and there's, you know, other things that are coming out soon for Boom. They got that BKB. Not sure if that smoke was scouted or not. Don't uh, think Boom. so. Heading across the map. As the Aegis expires, they're running in towards Insania, but if they keep heading north, they might find some juicier targets. Ooh, they might find Matsu's Hyperstone here if he buys it. Courier. Nice All right, yep. All right. They got the Hyperstone. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> that would have been nice. Can't catch Mickey, though. He also is trying to get towards uh, his next item. Lotus Orb going to be done in just a, a trip to the secret shop. Alk still maintaining that pretty substantial lead over the CK, which you would anticipate. And with the BKB done now, no Hyperstone yet. Uh, the question is how do they start these fights? Who catches who? Are BKBs going to get off? Or are people going to get bursted? I think Boom are uh, reaching a point now where these fights are hard to initiate. Yeah, like they can start going into towers and maybe force a bad initiation from Liquid, but if they're at this point where they're trying to catch these heroes, you know, we're going to have a four staff save from Insania, which of course, uh, you know, when, when you're well coordinated, they can still make a humongous deal, especially when you're being pushed towards the end. She's got the nature's attendance going, and again, we're talking about this idea of the regen. Every save is just amplified when you have a, a lineup like Liquid because they have their natural ability to try and regenerate. After that, yeah. you just need to find and buy them a little bit of space, and that's what this Enchantress and this Earth oh. are going to try and do. Jackie, Mickey okay, goes into all of them. Reactive armor stacks not where they need to be. He is gone. Snowball afterwards to Insania and just timber chained into the wrong spot. Zai up on the high ground, gonna pop the BKB exorcism. Still thinks that this is a decent fight for them as well, Matumbo Man pulled back in. He pops his BKB, tries to fight away from Jackie Yopage, throws out the avalanche and gets a little bit of distance. And that might be enough to get him away. So the fights break down after the initial volley, but that's exorcism down. Yeah, and this is a situation where it, like, it, it just can't happen like that. Some of the difficulties of the initiation where they really self-define that big toss back. Oh, Mickey toss himself into boom. Yeah. You know, he did Tiny's job for him. That's right. Oh, they stuck around, though. Oh. They waited and they lurked, and he got punished for being greedy. That was, that was very well done. Look what he did that. It feels like Yopaz was like trying to bait something because he had Tim's coming over and he's like, ah, yeah, I'll, I'll find something. No Yopaj in this fight if they want to take it. And Roche, 35 seconds until it's capable of respawning. This game, again, it straddled that line of, you know, 1,000, 2,000 gold lead the entire time with pretty big stratifications across the different layers of cores. We're getting to the point now where it really comes down to how that initiation starts. Yeah, I mean, we just have so much blink potential, right? We have the, uh, the Tusk, the CK, and the Tiny looking for that big hop where they just get in there and blow you up. So uh, if there's an Aegis on Liquid, that, uh, that nullifies a lot of this net worth that they then spent. So America's favorite game in 24 seconds. 30. Okay, Two? Not even <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Three minutes. All right, so it's a big, big timer for the Roche. And who is that going to benefit in this situation? Well, I, I suppose it's probably Liquid, because time seems to be on their side. That's true. AC now done on the Alchemist. But it also comes down a lot to who has that vision. Liquid with a really good ward up on that high ground, scouting all of Boom's movement across the map there. Um, not lower pillar, but Boom also getting down a ward themselves. They didn't actually deward that one, it looks like, so we'll keep it for the moment. And Liquid, Radiant do they scanning. want to? Yeah, they scan. They know what's happening. Immediately head out of that triangle. Going to leave it and head to their vision instead. Yeah, and that edge creep is running around as well, trying to find this vision on them. And an idea what's up is it gets tossed out of it. Yeah, yo, Posh, so. Make it, make it dead. Have that sentry ward up there. And... 
it's that weird moment where you like this would normally be where you'd want to take that fight and go immediately into the Roche pit. Neither team has gone and checked it yet. Yeah, Boxy, yeah. I mean, he has the shard. He's holding here. It's a great spot to fight for Boxy. Walks into everybody. Silence. He's just going to die. Another one of those very bizarre moments where you think you could take the fight and just very wrong. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. That was, uh, that was interesting. Tower is under attack. <laughs> That's a bold move. That's what that is. I mean, number one, maybe not expecting them to necessarily all be there, or he's thinking, like, I can snowball fast enough, Dyer's right? That I feel like that was his play. I'm going right. to snowball. I'll provide the vision. You guys have this sweet jump that you can punish on this, but that's Dyer's still risky into an Earthshaker, because if you don't have a stun or at least some sort of damage on the box, and he can just reposition with the blink, with the shard, with the echo, it's not that easy. Uh, then again, you know, maybe they just preemptively pop their BKBs, and they do it in a very aggressive manner when they go. That's true, too. Scam one of that keyboard so bad, he yeah. just he threw the sentry down, Dyer's huh? Middle tower is under yeah, I'll double sentry that clip. I don't care. So, in spite of that nice pickoff, it doesn't end up mattering that much at all. I mean, you didn't have to use a buyback. Everybody's together again. And the only thing that's really changed is the swap out of position and vision on the map, where now it's liquid that hold this high ground. Uh, and boom, hanging on to the pillar above. Yeah, we both got creeps in. It's a creep battle in the, you know, the Roche pit here. One of them's not putting up too much of a fight. Oh, God. Poor guy. Didn't stand a chance. He was busy. He was shopping. He's getting, you know, <laughs> getting some of Vlad's here as he builds them towards that Wraith pack. Basher being done would be pretty good, too. Has there been that much more progression, I feel like, out of uh, Yopage? Doesn't look like it. We did see the AC completed for the Alk, and for now, it's still just that BKB and the Echo Saber. CK, Mage Slayer done, trying to get into the heart. Done. Stun, kill off the edge creep. That next round of neutrals. Be nice done here second. That's a good one. Yeah, you got him. Roche respawns, neither team confident to go on in. I mean, these matches, when yeah. going up one game in a three-game series to determine who goes to TI, you can see just how careful, calculated, and, like, nobody wants to be the person that, like, you know, goes in and loses everything. Yeah, this is every one little bit, too, right? You know, like, that looks like Boxy's level 11, almost 12. So I can really use a couple more points in my skills right now. Yeah. Every little bit helps on Shaker, be it the ulti points or be it the points in Aftershock. I mean, with a shard, I'm sure you can make a case for the Aftershock. Smoke, they don't get Mickey in it. But Liquid, thinking this is their moment to head in. Insania, waiting for the smoke to break. He gets a ward up on the high ground. That Tim uh, left Curry there for so long intentionally for this exact situation, so he could spot when the smoke comes in. That Curry's been there forever. That's a great play by Tim's. So he knows that they spent their smoke. They know that they're in the pit right now. But do they know that Roche is being taken? Need to send in some creeps, get some vision there. No Paj. He blinks for the D board, Tim's. Oh, oh, he tries to force that him down. It's saying he's getting crazy. But they do have a snowball over to some creeps. And a little bit of a misplay. They thought that he was going over that direction, and Yopan pops the BKB, runs through. Things get a little bit wild. TP's out, realizing that was not the fight they thought it was going to be. Well, he gets a free exit, but yeah, the question is, can he get back in for a good spot in this fight now? The illusion bait was interesting. All right, we got the mech, we got the hand of God. They see this. The acid spray down, breaking any blink daggers that could come out. Boom, they need to find another way to get in. The Chakram, it's blocking their path. Dude, the Chakram is right there, ready to go. Jackie BKB walks in for the stun. A bash now on him, a tub of man. The shorts keep it in the way. They need Tim. to get this off to the cavalry. What a combo from Flipsy says no, and Matumba Man snatches the Aegis. Yopaj in trouble, he goes down. Liquid, they managed to win that fight, getting the Aegis on the Alk. Oh. What a stop from Boxy. And that was the cost of spending that BKB early. Didn't have it when he really needed it, jumping in to try and grab that Aegis. Yes, you're able to get a kill on the Rose, but obviously look at the higher prize there on Team Liquid. And all of that coming back to the way they played around this pillar, that vision. Even just that initial play by Insania to attempt the cheeky four staff offensively to push him to the low ground. Attack. All of that coming back, breaking apart this idea of boom, the block on the staircase for oh, the yeah. Shocker. Just beautiful stuff. And imagine if that nether toxin was just placed a little bit to the left inside the pit or something, then that stun's not there. Maybe you find a way. Oh, Boxy he was right ready for it. When they needed him most, came in for it. My but reward. 11, or rather 10 to 13. The thing that's interesting that's is that because that fight was still kind of a wash, the main victory is that you've got this Alka, Alka Aegis now, but I don't know if that's going to make him feel confident pushing across the map either. We'll see. 
to me, it, it just comes down to the question of like how common are Boom now? Like, yeah. Do they feel like they can actually approach more of these tier twos or even a tier three at that point now that they're up to this raid pack? It, it comes down to Yopaj having to put himself in this role of the support. Like, uh, in this situation, that's where you want the four tiny because you want to be a bit riskier, much right. like he had to like BKB TP out. That, that's the cost of doing these tossbacks. Yeah, it gets really hard to make those fights be perfect. And if you don't amply BKB, you get Yules. Like, look at this vision on the high ground. You're going to get a pre Yules from Zai if you go in on here. So, great D ward there. Very important right now. And Tim's like, that's his courier, right? Yeah. You know, this is why a lot of sport players love playing these heroes that can actually get that vision with their skills on the high ground. But sometimes you, you just got to throw down sentries and bring your courier along for the ride. I feel like there's like a Pavlovian response where people just have to hit a courier if they see it running by. You know, so he's going to bait that out at some point. But AC done on FBZ. They've got triple BKB for Liquid as Timbersaw picked one up. It's interesting because you mentioned like Yopaj kind of falling back almost into a supporting type role. And we're seeing for FBZ, he feels that pressure to be that other right clicker, that other yeah. hero that can, uh, you know, make the difference with Jackie. It's certainly the best thing you can do in a game like this versus a, a DP, a Timber, and an Alchemist like the Scotty. We, we know what their heroes do, right? You're, yeah. you're trying to beat out this regen. Meanwhile, Jackie's like, what if I just regen? Dyer's you know, what, what if I saw a heart? How about, how about that? Is that going to work out for us? Dyer's He's a strong boy. All right, well, Yopaj not as risky potentially by using the Shadow Blade here. Radiant Vision, they actually don't have any sentries here. This is a big reveal. Finds one. Mickey okay, toss back on FBZ. The BKB response. Don't know if he spotted that when they tossed it back. FBZ will have the Viper Strike. Jack blows up. Zayn did not stand a chance. Turns for another two second stun. Can they bring down Mickey? Instead, they focus down on the Zai. Back out. FBZ in some trouble. The Bash is there, but Matumaman not trying to go for the full commit. Trying to run away is Scam. He gets stunned. He gets control. Chen getting a lot of free Jet in, but does not have the help of his team. Matumaman BKB wearing out. Tim was thinking about turning to him. With the tier 2 tower already dead, I don't know if Boom can take this fight. Oh, they want to chase. They got Blink on CK. They got Blink on Tusk. Viper wants his range damage. They want to win. Survivability on this Viper. Matumba Man gets his ulti off and Tams runs on in silence. FBZ oh, now knows he's in trouble as they bring him down for the finish. Tims now turns, Mickey back in, out dies Jackie in this long extended fight. The heart region doing so much for him. He's got a couple more punches. Tims wants to walk back through this. He's up mana. 2v3. But Insania is far away and not really going to provide that much help. Jackie low, the chakra mids out. He's trying to regen off of creeps. There's the still snowball. To come in. They do have the Chen nearby. Scamp gets there for the mech. It's enough for the save. Both of the creep heroes are back. They have the blast door. The turret Insania just dives again. We're hoping something else would go on, but Tim's there with the PKP cancel. Mickey falls in the extended fight. CK Chen, they still win. Tim's just lurking through the tree line throughout all of this. That vision helping them out through so much of this engagement, allowing him to play nice and safe. He started out the fight by also kiting Matu up at the top near the tier two tower while the rest of his allies are focusing down some of these other uh, important targets. And great prioritization throughout so much of this from Jackie too. Just Insania, I think, played about two seconds of that fight between two lives. <laughs> it was rough. Help is the call from him, and he needs it. Oh, geez, 34 minutes in, and very little separating the two teams, but behind these pop dogs, down bottom, Boxy goes down, Yopaj connects, Timbersaw's dead for 40. That is a pricey death here, and yeah, part of that replay. I mean, you can just see, honestly, the story of this fight is just total chaos, right? It's so burned out there in the bottom lane, that's where, yeah, the, sorry, in the bottom picture, that's where you saw the Tim's like, he secured so much of Matu's time, and he spent so much of that fight with 20% HP or less, and he did so much for the team because of that. Got to potentially get back into the Radiance real game here is they do have buybacks on two heroes, but you don't want to have to use them. A tumble man pops that BKB, backs away. Racks going down. 3k gold, but it, I mean, they're not willing to buy back for this one yet. It's so close. How much damage can Boom get while they're waiting? They've already taken one melee. Do they stick around for another or do they back out? Gotta watch out for that big Echo Slam. He's got it ready. Boxy TPing in. Wants to find his target, but will he be able to? They already have the breakdown. He won't have a stun if he goes in. BZ turned upon. They have the TP there waiting for the breakdown. Boxy still hunting. Waiting in the backside. Side tries to burn out a little bit more. These heroes, they can't find the target. FBZ low, Fisher 
connects onto two pretty good. And they're gonna find at least those two. And they're backing over there. Middle barracks are under TP attack. out from the tiny. Jack is just trying to run and they, they couldn't get the sync there. Are they trying to get like the penitence? Was the tag team just blow up somebody if they could at this point? But the BKBs are all up there from Liquid. They do defend their high ground. Mm. Very back and forth. But boom, strike the first big economic damage. The big creep wave damage. Getting that mid melee racks down. They still have a ward up on that high ground because the tower was taken. Which is inside the base, but it seems unlikely to just go for another, like run down another lane with all of Liquid alive. Yeah, much like uh, losing Boxy last time with a couple heroes dead. We'll see if they lose someone on Boom. Zai, broke it, toss back, stun. Oh, but the Ewells gets away. Zai was wondering if they were going to go for the full chain stun, but doesn't get it. Where was I? Right. Nah, just taking this outpost. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Uh, neutral's about to come up again as well here. That next round. But Hero's respawning with Tusk and the big range of initiation. They could engage now if they wanted to. Dyer, Overwhelming Austin. Blink completed now for Matu. They are struggling with the damage, obviously. That's that's one issue that we saw from Jack with the heart. They're, they're trying to like chew through this guy. So maybe that extra bit of burst at the beginning can help out on uh, some of these side heroes. You know, maybe it's not going to do that much versus the, the CK necessarily, but... Trying to catch scam at the beginning. Ooh, Timeless Relic is nice. That's some extra damage for him. And look at this wrap here. Hand of God, not there. So missing a pretty key part of their fight. They're going to find Zai again. That's right into him. Stun BKB. Zai, Heal Scepter. Tries to get out. Can he escape? But some of it shows up. Good stun onto the Tusk. Boxy joining together with the rest of the team. A good burst down as Zai will fall. Mickey BKB hits his wearing down lower. Boxy by back. Right on top of him. Where do they go next? A couple more minutes of control. The break is there. This Viper is doing so much work. Steady tall in front of all of them. He's left alone. The wrap through, yeah, he's eventually going to fall. BZ goes down, but they got the buyback out of his eye. It was almost an instant roast, too. It's back up. That is huge. Liquid, do they check? Oh, they might not check. They don't realize that it's up. Ah, this would have been the moment. Could have been. No, Zai gets in there. Zai's going for it. He's got the brain. He checks. The pings are there. A self stun going to come onto Matumba. And boom. Are they going to recognize? I, it's, it was such a quick roach respawn. This is such a gift for Liquid. Zai heading on into the pit to yeah. check it, and boom, they're just going to have no idea. If you're not sure, you can't really avoid these buybacks, especially on FBC. Oh, what a big win that That's is. That's an Agonim Maybe Scepter as well here. Oh my god. What a turn of fate. Liquid get gifted by Gaben. Just a huge win. Off the back of that kill on FBZ and a second Chakram. Suddenly they have significantly less damage issues. Mickey is huge. They must have given him the shard too, huh? I think so. Unless it was Jackie got the other one. I'm not even sure at this point, but... Uh... It's a bit chaotic on that first row, so not many shards this game. A little unusual, only three across the board. True. And only a couple of them there. And how much does this change things? I mean, boom, okay, they have this ward. They want to take advantage of it. They find Boxy right at the start. Stun, interrupted. Matumba Man, ready for the punish. The badge is there. They got a control scan trying to keep him alive. And Hand of God, everything for Jackie. But eventually, so all day, keeps him alive. Oh, the region is going to come out. Make it survive through them. Like a second salvo, it won't. They went for it all, and it did not work. FBC also in trouble as they find another pick. And boom, they felt their moment. They yeah. thought they could do it. But man, I'll say Blast Drake is really freaking good against CK. Yeah, I definitely understand the idea though. Like he feels the need to go for these plays because of the itemization that they have here with his blood thorn. Like he's he's gone. He, they have to find the solitary confinement to just kill any of these heroes on Liquid. You know, uh, <laughs> there, there's just too much assistance. I think he dies if he doesn't have Blast Drake. Yeah, like it, it was so close. Yeah, unreal. Five thousand gold lead already after that fight and now even further ahead and boom it was just it wasn't gonna work yeah i mean they took the the mid racks at least right so they've gotten that that's true but uh not able to get any further pressure after that now coming down to the tier two in the mid lane Dyer's mid might get a racks of their own if they're not careful still 30 seconds without ck oh, man. 
walks high ground. They got Reeves on Chen. Buyback status. He is 1,400 gold away on the CK. They will use the Glyph, Liquid Glyph themselves. Oh no, they still hold theirs. Tim's is slowly approaching from the back here. Of course, these fights. Uh, they've been picking him off the start. It's made the fights a little bit more difficult to execute from Boom, but Tim's gonna be in a good spot this time. Yo, Posh, Abba, toss back into the base. Pops the BKB, Matumba Man wants to get away. Boom's still gonna try and chase this. Tim has the control, where's the snowball afterward? And so the BKB is there. Drop down low, but Tim, he has his own BKB. He's gonna survive through at least the first out of snowball. Jackie pulls it back in, but surviving not long enough. They take down Matumba Man Foxy. It's not there. They don't have nearly enough damage. Liquid, they're in 3D. Tim's walking away, side gets the finish. Chases, chases, they buy back. Mickey hoping to escape. Zai will TP away. Oh, the buy that from Tim's. He was ready for it. They knew. Yopaj still trying to chase Foxy, keeping him under control. Mickey hoping to get out of here, but do they have the avalanche? The tree toss? The chakram? Oh, the break it. How can you blink versus two chakrams? <laughs> it's impossible. But they have him here. Oh, Yopaj not quite in range. Throws out the avalanche. Mickey is TPing behind the tower. Tim spots him, but no. They don't quite actually see him. Snowball's not quite fast enough, even now. And boom, they find their moment. They find the way they need to play these fights with that Tusk. So important that that save is going to be there to try and delay things. It's just uh, the BKB piercing control as well. Just... But this is where it really matters. That earlier buyback from Zai, he doesn't have it. That's why they gave him the Aegis. Another three minutes, and that is a heavy punish. They only have four heroes here. How much can Boom get? They know that this is their time. Although, Kenji tipped over to the side. No patch. Oh, oh, toss him away. That keeps him alive. Pretty big commission. Turn is dead. The game didn't stand a chance. And he has to buy back. This is Danger Town. Liquid can lose the game right here if they're not careful. And Boom want to get as much objectives as they can. FBZ's right up front. Still has the BKB. Nice stalwart tower here. As Yopaj is hunting as well, looking, has Silver Edge, has Blink. One more toss back. That's all they Radiance need. Matumba Man so goes down, this game is over. They're still the though. Parents. This game's over. Uh, and Liquid, they're, they're not gonna attempt fate. Tumba Man, BKB, I, they might have to give up Rax here. Still 19 seconds. They turn, they find the game. He goes down, that would be it. Roxy tries to interrupt this, oh. and the game, he gets out. He survives, but Tumba Man low, broken. A couple of punches down low, and going to fall. Two minutes dead. Boom, they survive through the madness. Gonna set their sights now on the tier four towers. They actually don't have a creep wave. Oh, with the buyback from Edge, they gotta get this back in here. It's still two minutes without Matumba Man, but Sai is back up with Mickey. No boxy either. It feels like they could just guide this creep wave in here though, right? It's true. I mean, the, the couriers are flying out. They toss. Sania gets the four staff out. Boom. Bouncing between. Do we go for tier fours or do we go for the racks? They're going to set their sights now onto the tier fours. Try and finish this all here. Mickey slowing down what they can. The silence is out. The chakra already thrown. Side pops the exorcism. Trying to delay. This would be a miraculous hold if Liquid could manage it. Sai BKB runs in. Tim's right on top of them. They're throwing out the infinite shots. I don't know if it's going to be enough though. Sai down low and eventually falls. 90 seconds gone, and I think Boom have locked this one away as everybody's dead. GG. Boom strike first blood. Well, Vic was holding on for so long there. He's been taking the lead at a certain point, and when that Aegis comes up, they managed to grab that, get the Agnums. It felt like maybe this was their chance to finally be in full control of this game, but Boom answered back with a, an excellent base defense. Again,